بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد الإيمان is made up of statements of the tongue actions of the heart your belief and a part of the actions you do with your limbs عن عثمان رضي الله تعالى عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ان مات وهو يعلم انه لا اله الا الله دخل الجنه the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that whoever dies and he knows that there is no god worthy of worship except allah will enter paradise in this hadith there are many many benefits one of the benefits is that it shows us the benefit of taking the shahada of bearing witness that there is no god worthy of worship except allah and that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the last prophet and messenger alayhi salatu wasalam and also in this hadith it shows that this is the kalima to tawhid it illustrates for us that the shahada is the kalima it's the statement which enters a person into the fold of islam and that it is also the key to jannah to paradise and that this is one of the most important things and the first pillar of islam and on top of that the muslim will gain forgiveness for all of their sins when a person enters the fold of islam and utters the shahada with meeting the conditions of the shahada that they're truthful that they say it based upon knowledge understanding its meaning and that they have sincerity in their heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this hadith another benefit of this hadith is that this hadith is not proof for the murjia those people who say that it's sufficient to have iman in their heart only or iman is sufficient just to say something on your tongue or or to 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 believe it only this is not a proof for them in their belief and this goes against the consensus of ahl sunnah wal jamaa and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says which shows us that there are so many so much other evidence there are so many other evidences which illustrate for us that this is not true that it's not sufficient just to take one hadith and use it as an evidence to establish your creed upon it to say that iman doesn't fluctuate or to say that iman is only comprised of knowing and understanding or that it's only comprised of just a belief in the heart no it's not sufficient to just take this hadith and run with it but rather we have to look at other nusus for example Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitabil karim innama al mu'minuna alladhina idha dhukira idha dhukira Allah wajilat qulubuhum wa idha tuliyat alayhim ayatuhu zadathum imanan wa ala rabbihim yatawakkalun alladhina yuqimuna as-salat wa mimma razaqnahum yunfiqun ulaika humul mu'minun haqqa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Anfal Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the traits of the believers. He says subhanahu wa ta'ala, verily the believers, they are those who when Allah is mentioned that their hearts uh fill up with fear. Uh and then if one of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's verses are recited that their their hearts fill with iman and on, upon their Lord they rely they put their trust in their lord they are the ones who establish the prayer and from their rizq that allah has provided for them they spend it they spend it in the cause of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they are the muslims they are the believers the truthful believers or the the real believers as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ulaika humul mu'minun haqqa those are the real uh uh mu'mins the real believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made in this ayat has has showed us that deeds are a part of iman that tawakkul is a part of iman that actually doing actions and deeds that remembering Allah is a part of iman that 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 the heart of the believer is filled with fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he is mentioned that reading and reciting the ayats and these are physical things are part of iman and that 
establishing the prayer, which is a physical action of ibadah, and also upon the tongue, and also requires the heart, that is also a part of our deeds. So it shows us that deeds are a part of iman. So that shows us why it's imperative in that Ahlul Sunnah, they look at all of the nasus and they take their creed from all of the nasus of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but they don't just run with one hadith run one ayat and try to uh, build their whole creed based upon that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said which also illustrates for us that iman is a part of uh, that iman is comprised of deeds qala sallallahu alaihi wasallam al iman Bid'u wa sittun shu'ba A'laha qawl la ilaha illallah Wa adnaha amatata adha an tariq Wa alhaya shu'batan min al-iman The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that iman is, based, is built on 60 different branches The highest of it is the statement La ilaha illallah There is no God worthy of worship except Allah And the lowest part, it, part of, uh, of iman is removing something from the 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 path from the from the from the street for example if there's a, a branch or a thorn that can cause people harm this is a part of iman to remove it and then the prophet sallallahu said and shyness is a part of iman so this shows us again shyness and the deeds the the point being here the prophet sallallahu said wa adnaha amatata adha an tariq that the lowest part of iman the smallest part is removing a harm from the road so it shows us that that is an action and an action is a part of iman because the prophet sallallahu said al iman bid'u wa sittun shu'ba he said it is, it is uh, 60 parts and the highest of it is this is uh, saying the shahada and the lowest part of it is removing something harmful from, from the from the uh, from the road so it shows us that removing something is a part of iman and that actions are a part of iman and this contradicts the madhab and the methodology of the people of innovation and bid'ah because they believe, they just take a part of the nasus, they take whatever seems to support their creed, whatever seems to support their madhab, whatever seems to support their minhaj, and they run with it. But instead of looking at all of the Qur'an and all of the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, whether it's a part of the authentic sunnah of the Messenger of Allah wasallam, or not, and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil, anything I said was correct, was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anything is, I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam